Hi, this is Kitty Wan back with part two in the video tutorial series on creating a memory match game with Construct2. In the last video, the big accomplishment was to create a card object for the game. The card turns face up when you click on it, and it shows one of 24 possible faces depending on the instance variable card face frame. Uh, in this video, the task is to lay out the cards in a tableau, and let's go ahead and take a look at that. This is the uh, memory match game running up on the uh, Sierra Arcade. It's under, you'll find it under Example Games. Alright, you see that the, the uh, cards are laid out in a tableau consisting of 24 cards arranged in four rows and six columns. And notice that there is a space between each card both vertically and horizontally, and that there is a top margin, and a bottom margin, and a left margin, and a right margin. So in this video we're going to be showing how to lay out the cards in, a tab in the tableau in such a way that if you want a larger or smaller window size, or if you want more or fewer cards, the game can handle it. Now that's a lot to cover, so let's get going. Go on back to Construct. And first off, we need to create some global variables. You can put global variables in the event sheet, in the same event sheet we've been using, but remember that since a global variable is accessible to any event sheet in the game, I like to put them in a separate event sheet. That way, if I have several different event sheets, I don't have to look through all of them trying to find a, a particular global variable definition. So we're going to go ahead and follow that practice and add an event sheet. We'll call it global. And we're going to add the first variable will be a variable call that holds the number of cards in the game. So right click and click and choose add global variable and I like to prefix my variables with the global variables with a little g. Uh, it's a matter of personal preference or coding standards depending on what your organization requires but that way I can identi identify the global variables immediately when I glance at them. So the number of cards we've already said that for the purpose of the tutorial we're going to be sticking with 24. Go ahead and click OK. We also need to a global variable that stores the number of rows. G, number rows. And we said that was going to be 4. And the number of columns. G, number columns. Another thing I'm doing is I'm spelling the things out because, first of all, for it's easier for you to remember what it is, and also because there's really no penalty to making it longer. It's a little bit more to type, but you don't do much typing in Construct. So so the number of columns was 6. Go ahead and enter that. All right. Um, another thing we're going to need to know is the card height. We'll call it card height. And we don't know what the value is, so we're not going to give it an initial value. And we'll add a global variable g card width. Again, we don't know what that's going to be, so we'll leave it at zero. We also need to know, remember I pointed out the space between the cards, so let's go ahead and put something in for that. g space between cards. And I'm just going to arbitrarily set that at 5. We also need to know the top margin and I'm going to call that margin top. We don't know the value so we leave it blank and we need the left margin okay we don't need to calculate the bottom or the right margin because we'll be arranging the cards starting from the top left and the bottom and right margins will just be whatever is left over when we get done. 
All right, that's all the global variables we need for right now. So let's go back to the event sheet and add a new event. And this will be another system event. And it's going to occur on the start of layout. The first thing we want to calculate is the card height. Because our cards are tall and our window's short, stacking those cards up, if we stack them, if they're too big, they're going to overflow off the bottom of the <coughs> of the window. So we want to make sure that we calculate the card height first. So it's going to be adding a system action to calculate a global or set the value of a global variable. And the the value, the variable we're interested in is g card height. And I've saved off these expressions. So I'm just going to paste them in and give you a brief explanation of what they are. And there's a more extensive explanation. There's a link to a more extensive explanation on the page where this video is hosted. Essentially what we're doing is we're saying, give me the window height, which is system, a system variable that you can get any time and and subtract from it the white space that is the space between the cards and the margins and I'm saying that my minimum margin is going to be the same as this uh, top and bottom it's going to be the same as the space between the cards and then divide that by the number of rows so the white space divided by the uh, the whites the window height minus the white space divided by the number of rows is going to give you the card height. Now that we know the card height, we can calculate the card width. And that's because we know the proportions between the, the original card height and the card width. And those values, if you are interested in them, are stored in the properties panel. You'll find them under the size property, you'll f if you open that's usually closed. If you open it up, you'll find width and height. They're also shown right here, width and height. So go back to the event sheet, add a new action. Again, system set value of a global variable. This time it's going to be card width. So I'm saying that if I take the old card width divided by the old card height, that gives me a ratio. And if I multiply the new card height by that, I'll end up with the um, new card width. And this int just simply says that I don't want this to be flipped. I just give, me th give this back to me as an integer with no decimal places. I, I don't need to be that precise. Now we need to, given that we have the the height and the width of the cards, we can calculate the margins. So let's add an action to set the value of our left margin. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're saying from the window width, subtract the space that's occupied by the cards and that little space between the cards divider. And then divide that by the number of columns, or rather times the number of columns. This is the card width plus the space between the cards times the number of columns and then um, divide the whole thing by two because I want part of the margin to go on the left and part of the margin to go on the right. And we need to do the same thing for the top margin. And it's calculated essentially the same way. 